Google Cloud Functions is a serverless computing platform that allows you to run code without provisioning or managing any infrastructure or servers. This is actually a great way to build event-driven applications. In this video, I will show you how to use Cloud Build to continuously deploy changes to Cloud Functions so that you can maintain your Cloud Function always up to date with the latest versions of your code. And in these few minutes, I will be covering these important points. First of all, I will talk about what are the common use cases for Cloud Functions. Maybe this can serve as a brief introduction if you are not familiar with Cloud Function before. Or maybe this might give you some more ideas on how to use Cloud Functions in your work and in your applications. And then I will talk about the regular and the basically the generic ways of maintaining a Cloud Function how you can update it with new versions of the code and so on. And then I'll talk specifically about Cloud Build and how you can use it to uh, maintain and apply changes to Cloud Functions. And then I will talk about the prerequisites that you need to have in place before you implement this scenario and this setup that I'll be showing you in my video. And finally, or maybe this is something that's going in parallel, which is a demo on how to do the setup and how to execute the pipeline then how to test it and before i show you that i would love if you like the video subscribe and enable the alerts or maybe just like the video so that it gets more visibility on youtube so let me start with the first point here which is what are the most common use or basically what are the use cases for cloud functions in general and if you are familiar with cloud functions already then you will know that it can be used for http triggers you create a function such as the one that you can see here, which will generate a URL and then you can send requests to, to this URL. You can create functions that are also triggered by events such as stuff coming from PubSub when uh, an event happens in the environment or when you send a message to the PubSub topic, then it will trigger cloud function. You can create functions that can be scheduled as well through cloud scheduler. Basically, you can do a lot of stuff there. And if you want to put these to uh, real life use cases, then maybe you want to use Cloud Functions to process uh, file uploads. If you have an e-commerce website, for example, and some users uploaded files to the uh, backend or the front end or whatever, then maybe you want to process these images, such as running them against uh, Vision AI so that you can analyze them using Cloud Function. Maybe you can just label the images or maybe you can also send messages such as emails or Slack messages when an event happens in the environment. So these are just the tip of many use cases for cloud functions and there are basically endless combinations and possibilities of how you can use this awesome service. Now let's assume you have your cloud function here, which is the one, or maybe this is the one that I have, right? So this is an existing cloud function. How can I maintain this one? Let's say when I create a new feature or when I fix a bug in this one, how to get it into this console, how to get it to serve the requests? Well, there are two ways for this. Obviously you can do it from the console. So you go inside your function and then you go to edit once this loads, you go to edit and then you uh, can see the source in the next step and you can modify your source with whatever you want. Maybe you don't want to do this, so maybe you can or you want to download this as a zip file once I go to the source tab and then you edit it in your system and then use gcloud to change or to apply the changes which is something I think it's more flexible and more uh, easy to do than the console. It will save some few steps, some few clicks. <laughs> and the command for that is very simple and straightforward, which is gcloud functions deploy and then your function name and then you specify the source and you press enter. That's it. <laughs> it is a very easy command, right? But then you, you're still doing this manually and you don't want to do stuff manually, right? Because doing things manually is always prone for errors and you don't know what you can miss. You may misspell uh, the function name, maybe you misspell whatever and you end up with an undesired situation or result. So the other way 
to maintain your cloud function is by using cloud build and again if you are not aware of cloud build i hope you are aware because you are watching this video but if you are not aware then cloud build is a serverless ci cd platform i would call it only ci but then they use to add cd in it but then yeah well whatever you want to consider it it's a service that allows you to automate building testing and deploying your code and again you can use it to do a lot of stuff it's one of the great services and features in gcp it literally doesn't care what you do with it as long as you provide it with a working image with a working cloud build yaml file with working configuration that contains steps and with clear steps to execute the logic as long as you have these it just doesn't care what you do with it it doesn't care what it's doing as long as it ends up with success <laughs> and in my case i will use exactly this so i will enable cloud build i will provide a cloud build.yaml file and inside that cloud build.yaml i will actually have only these few lines this is all what i need to get my pipeline working and de uh, automatically deploying the uh, changes to this cloud function and if you notice this is exactly the same command that i mentioned a moment ago it's g cloud i'm using the g cloud builder uh, so G Cloud functions deploy CF test the cloud function name and then the source. That's it. This is all what's required for me to automate the process. Now, before you actually see this, before I take you into the actual steps to do that, there are a few prerequisites that you need to have in place before you start doing that. The first one is obviously enabling Cloud Build API and basically this can be done automatically for you because if you have an existing cloud function similar to what you see here then whenever you create your first function it will ask you to enable four apis cloud functions api is one of them obviously the other three are the cloud build cloud logging and cloud pub sub api and then when you deploy the function you will get errors because you're also going to miss the artifact registry API, which will prompt you to enable during the execution of the uh, command. So also you need cloud artifact uh, registry API, and you may want to manually make sure cloud run API is enabled if you are using a second generation cloud function, which is the one that I'm using here. This depends on cloud run, so you must have cloud run service enabled as well. Now also, you need to grant the cloud build service account the access and the permission to deploy into cloud functions right because it's a separate service and it needs permissions and there is a point here that i want to mention i'm going to use the default service account for cloud build in your production i don't really think you should be using the de the default service accounts you should always use a custom service account that you create and you manually granted permissions because that is a best practice. The best practice is to not use the default service accounts. But then just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to use the default service account here. And finally, uh, which is obvious, we're going to create the cloud build.yaml file and put this thing inside it and then execute the pipeline and obviously my source will be github so let me move this away so this is my code this is my application and just to show you what's this function it's a very basic thing here uh let me open the link for it so that you can see once the page loads yeah so this is the url for the cloud function when i click it it will open a new tab with a very basic thing here that's a very basic output which is actually found here main.py this is python and this application does nothing literally just displaying this text here and just to create some dependencies i'm importing mysql.connector library it's not doing anything it's not going to connect to any database or anything i'm just creating some dependency on a an external library so that i can show you how it will be handled in cloud function as well which is very basic thing in requirements.txt, I added the reference for this library 
and I made sure the requirements.txt is present with the same uh, on the same level with the main.py. This is my application. And this is going to be hosted in GitHub and I will connect this GitHub to my cloud source repo so that I can use cloud source repo as the uh, layer or the point which will trigger cloud build. Now, in your case, you can do the same or if you want to, you can use cloud source repos directly, which is a little bit limited compared to GitHub, but then it's a Git repo. You can use it to control and you can use it to trigger cloud build, right? So let's start working on the steps. Now, Cloud Build API is enabled by default because, again, I'm having Cloud Function already created and it's there. I don't have to worry about it. Um, the next step here is to grant the service account. So I will go to settings and you'll see the set of possible services that I can immediately grant it from here. If for whatever reason you don't see the service that you want to grant, then you have to go to I am an access, copy this service account and manually grant the, granted the access to whatever service you want from I am. But in my case, this is Cloud Functions. I need to grant it Cloud Functions developer role and I will be all set. So I will move into this disabled and I will make it enabled. This will also trigger the other role, which is service account user for cloud uh, build uh, service account so that it can uh, uh, impersonate a service account and uh, deploy the uh, required changes. Now, the next step here is to configure my cloud source repo so that I can use it to trigger cloud build. So I will go to the menu again, and then I will find cloud source repos, cloud source repositories. It will open a new tab, obviously. And you will see that there is no repository right now. So I will add a new one. I will click connect external repository because I want to mirror my GitHub. I will click continue. And because I'm signed in into GitHub already, it's not going to ask me to sign in. It's just going, I, yeah, I need the project ID. Uh, I don't understand why it's not filled automatically, but anyways. <laughs> so it's going to just ask me to select the repo that I want to use for this uh, thing here, for this connector. I'm already signed in as mentioned, so yeah, it, it's going to immediately display the repos. In your case, you, it, will, it will ask you to sign into GitHub to authenticate, and then it will display the list of repositories so that you can choose from them and connect it. Okay, so it's showing the list of repos and the one that I need to use called gcp-cf-cloudbuild, which is this one. And that's it. I will click connect selected repository and I will be all set to move into the next step, which is configuring the trigger in cloud build. Okay, so the repo is connected now and it will take me to the page of the repo in GCP. And you see the files and the uh, list of uh, things, the activities are all displayed here. And again, this is a read only repository. So whatever changes I need to do, I will make them in GitHub and they will be replicated into this one. My next step is to create the trigger and I will keep the cloud build.yaml file to the end. So again, I'm still in the cloud build page. I will go to triggers and I will create a new trigger. Um, maybe I want to name it CF deploy, you know, just whatever thing that makes sense to you. I mean, I can't come up with any better name than this. <laughs> and the region, again, I probably mentioned this before. I just keep it on global just because I can. <laughs> but at some point, I think the region will matter when you have a lot of triggers and when you have uh, multiple layers or multiple levels of pipelines and all you would need to choose a region. For me, it's just a very quick and small demo. I will just uh, use the global for now, which is fine. Now, the event is obviously pushed to a branch and it will ask me to select the source, which is first generation because I want to use cloud source repo, which is the one that I just connected and it will automatically capture the branch name, which is main. And then uh, in the configuration, I will choose cloud build configuration file 
and the location for that will be inside the repo and I will keep using the default name which is cloudbuild.yaml I will copy it just so that I can create it and that's it this is all what's required for my pipeline if you want approvals you can do it I'm not going to enable approvals I will click create so now my pipeline is ready it's not going to run anything it's not going to execute anything yet because there is obviously no cloudbuild.yaml I will create it in github now and then once I commit the changes because this trigger is already connected to that repo it will automatically uh, execute the content in cloud build and you will see how it will deploy stuff to uh, what is it? to the cloud function <laughs> so let me go to cloud uh, to github and then let me add a file I will create a new file and I will name it cloudbuild.yaml which is the one that I copied now and again uh, as mentioned this is only what I need to do once I drag it <laughs> this is only the content that I need to add in this file so I will copy this and move it away and then I will come here and paste that's it now once I commit the changes I'm creating the cloudbuild.yaml here you will see the uh, trigger started to execute uh, hopefully hopefully it's going to be done now yeah so this is a trigger and you will see it's going to um, execute stuff now so it pulled the cloud G cloud builder image and now it's updating the function now nothing will change in here because I only created cloud build.yaml so let me modify my main.py file maybe I can uh, change the output a little bit so let me remove this one uh, okay so I'll put it in a new line so I'm just introducing this change so that you can see the output uh, changed and I think this one is done right so it's going to be completed I'm just going to wait for this to be completed and then or yeah I, I don't want to cancel it so should be done now yeah so it's done let me commit the new changes again when I refresh this you should not see any change or anything in the code because nothing has technically changed I will commit this file update main.py and then the trigger will be started again and hopefully within a minute it will uh, be done and we can see the changes in our cloud function so that's it this is all what you need to implement and set up if you want to use cloud build to uh, maintain and update your cloud functions automatically without you doing this every time manually through command line or through console and i hope that you found this video useful and it did teach you something new today uh, while this is going um, if you have any question if you have any comment about this please don't hesitate to put it in the comments section and if you have any suggestion for anything else, for any, any content or any video about Google Cloud Platform, even Google Workspace, please don't hesitate to also drop it in the comments section or send me a message. I would, I would love to uh, explore new ideas, to put new ideas to test, uh, explore new concepts and all. And also, if you found this video useful, I would really appreciate if you subscribe, if you uh, enable the alerts as well. And also if you like the video so that it can be more visible in YouTube. So this one is done. Just quickly, let me take you to the function and see the changes that happened here. So I'm refreshing this and you see the changes are automatically applied and we are all good. So with this, I will see you again in a new video. Thanks a lot for watching.